Hello, today we're continuing in our A-level physics revision series looking at geometric optics, particularly lenses and mirrors. I should say that you'll probably see outlines on the screen, they are there to give me a rough guide, ignore them until I fill them in. A lens can be made of anything, typically glass, and it has the property that as light passes through it, the light is refracted. But if the light lens is, draw is produced in such a way, this is what's called a convex lens, it has the property that parallel light, which means light that is coming from a long way away, will focus to a point. Because the light is refracted as it goes through the lens, but it is all refracted to a single point, and that is called the focal point. And the distance between the lens and the focal point is called the focal length, F. Here is a lens, and I'm going to use that lens to focus light from the window behind me onto a screen. I'm going to use this pad as a screen, and here is the lens. And as I move the lens towards the screen, you should see that there is a sharp image on the screen. As I go closer, the image becomes blurred again. As I come further away, at about that point there, it sharpens. And as I go further away again, it blurs. If I bring the screen nearer to the camera, you should be able to see that the image is about sharp about there and you should be able to see that the sky is at the bottom of the picture. In other words the image is upside down. What was actually happening in that example? Well here's our lens and here's a line which goes through the centre of the lens and here's our object. This is a real object. Now, whenever you draw diagrams with lenses or mirrors, the trick is that there are two particular sets of lines that you draw so you can find out what's happening. The first line is the parallel line. In other words, the line that runs parallel to this line here. And we know what will happen with light that goes along that line. Just as up here, that line will be refracted to the focal point. And so, so here it will be refracted through the focal point. The second line that you draw is one from the object through the center of the lens and that will go straight through the outside. It becomes a straight line. And where those two lines cross is where the image is formed. And you'll see that that image is upside down. So you've got an object on this side of the lens forming an inverted image on this side, the other side of the lens. And the distance from the lens to the object is given the letter U, and the distance from the image to the lens is given the letter V, and we know that the focal length is given by the letter F, and what I can tell you is that there's a lens formula that says that 1 over U plus 1 over V is equal to 1 over F, and I'll, de oh, and I'll derive that for you in just a moment. But just to remind ourselves that with lenses, and as we shall see with mirrors, but slightly differently, we are always looking at two lines that will give us a clue of what's happening. The first set of lines is the one that goes parallel and is therefore refracted through the focal point. Here's the focal point here. The second line is the one that goes from the object through the centre of the lens and that one isn't refracted at all, it just comes out as a straight line the other side. And where those two lines cross is where the object is focused on the other side of the lens. So this is the object, and this is the image. Now let's derive this lens formula. I'm going to draw the lens like this, I'm not going to do it with a 
curved side just to keep the geometrics right. Here's the central line. Here is the object. We're going to call that object height A. And here are the two rays that we draw. One is the parallel one that is refracted through the focal point. And here's the second ray which goes to the centre of the lens and out the other side. And where the two overlap, that is where the image is formed. And the image height is going to be B. Now we said that the distance of the object from the lens is given by the letter U. The distance from the image to the lens is given by the letter V. And the focal length is F. Now, I hope you can see that if we take this triangle here, then the tangent of that angle is A over U. But that angle is the same as that angle. And the tangent of that angle is B over V. So we've got an equation that A over U is B over V. Now we can also take this triangle here. And we can say that the tangent of that angle is equal to that height, which of course is the same as that height, A over F is equal to the tangent of that angle. Well, what is the tangent of that angle? That is B over this distance here, which is V minus F. And so we've got that A over U is B over V, and A over F is B over V minus F. And from this equation here, we can say that A over B equals F over V minus F. All we've done is bring the B down here, taking the F up there. And from this equation here, we can say that A over B is equal to U over V, because we bring the B down there and we take the U up there. So now we've got A over B is this and A over B is that, so that equals that. So we can now say that U over V that term there equals that term there, F over V minus F. And if we multiply out, we can say that U times V minus U times F, that's bringing the V minus F up here, U V minus U F, which is those two terms, equals V F, these two terms. Now, divide all of that by U V F. If you divide UV by UVF, you get 1 over F. If you divide UF by UVF, you get 1 over V. And if you divide VF by UVF, you get 1 over U. And if you rearrange that by bringing the 1 over V on that side, you get 1 over U plus 1 over V equals 1 over F, which is the lens formula. We can also consider the magnification of the lens. You'll notice that the object has a height B, sorry, the image has a height B, and the object has a height A. The magnification, which we might call M, is simply going to be the size of the image divided by the size of the object, B over A. But from this formula here, or indeed this formula here, you can see that B over A is V over U. In other words, we just invert these formulae. B over A is V over U. And so now you can see that the magnification of a lens can be calculated by the distance of the image from the lens divided by the distance of the object from the lens. And that is the magnification of the lens. The power of the lens is given by the formula 1 divided by the focal point, or the distance to the focal point. And what that tells you is that as the focal point gets shorter, the power of the lens gets larger. Before we consider convex or concave mirrors, let's just first 
remember how light reflects from an ordinary flat mirror. Here's a mirror, this is the silvered side. And if we have an object here, light will flow off, of course it will flow off in all directions, but let's just take one light beam coming from this object. How does it reflect off of the mirror? Well, what we do is we construct what's called a normal, that is a line which is at right angles to the mirror itself. And the angle at which this light strikes the mirror is the angle of incidence, I. Then that light will be reflected in such a way that this angle, which is the angle of reflection, is equal to the angle of incidence. So those two angles are the same. And you can consider any light you like. You can have another beam that comes down here. You draw another normal. That angle there will equal that angle there. All light beams will reflect such that the angle of incidence to the normal of the mirror is equal to the angle of reflection. So how is an image formed with a flat mirror? Well, let's first draw the mirror. And this is the silvered side. And here is my object. Now, let's take a light ray that goes in this direction here. We know that we have to construct a normal. That's a line that's 90 degrees to the mirror. And then that angle will equal that angle. The angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. But that's not the only uh, light ray you could think of. You could think of one, for example, that does actually travel along the normal. And then that light ray will just reflect straight back. And let's just put one more light ray in. Let's take the light ray that goes something like this. And again, we construct a normal and that will be reflected something like that. So now we've got three rays. There are, of course, going to be millions of them, but we've just picked three. Three rays which hit the mirror, and in each case, they are reflected back such that the angle of incidence equals the angle of reflection. Where is the image formed? Well, we need to project back from each of these rays. So this ray here, we reflect, we project back with a dotted line. This ray here, we project back with a dotted line. And this ray here, we project back with a dotted line. And you will see that they will all cross at that point here. And that is where the image is formed in the mirror. So if you're standing in front of a mirror here, you will see your image on the other side of the mirror. And you'll notice that this distance here equals that distance there. So when you're standing looking at a flat mirror, you are, your image appears to be as far behind the mirror as you are in front of it. So far, we've looked at convex lenses. Now let's look at a what's called concave mirror. This is the silver side of the mirror. And just like a lens, parallel light coming in will reflect from the mirror towards the focal point. And again, the focal length of that mirror is the distance from the mirror to the focal point, and that is called the focal length. So light coming in will be reflected to the focal point if it comes in parallel to this central line here. And to understand how an object forms an image, we need to draw the same kind of idea as we did with the lenses with our two lines. So here is our mirror again. Here's the, as it were, the central line. This is where the silver of the mirror is. So it's going to be reflected. And here is our object. And the question is, where will it form an image. Well, we draw two lines. The first line is the parallel line 
and we know that that will be reflected through the focal point of the mirror. The second line that we draw is one that goes from the object to this point here. What will happen to light that travels in that direction? Don't forget this was light travelling this direction, reflected here. What will happen to light travelling here? Well, it will be reflected at an angle of reflection that equals the angle of incidence. That's the angle of incidence. This will be the angle of reflection. And those two angles are the same. And where these two points cross, that is where the image will be formed. And once again, the image is upside down. The distance from the object to the mirror is once again u. The distance of the image from the mirror is once again v. And we know that that's the focal point, so that distance there is f. And as before, the formula can be written that 1 over u plus 1 over v is 1 over f. And the uh, proof of that is exactly the same as for the lens. Exactly the same geometry applies. Now, so far, we have been talking about real images which come from converging lenses or convex lenses or concave mirrors. We're now going to move on to an idea that's called a virtual image, which comes from a diverging lens or a concave lens, or indeed a convex mirror. So let's start off with a concave lens. A concave lens looks a bit like this. It's, it's in other words, it's bent the other way from the convex lens. Here's our central line. And the question now is, what happens when you have parallel lines of light coming in? If it were a convex lens, that light would be focused to a focal point here. But because it is a concave lens, what will happen is the light will be not converging, but it will diverge. In other words, it will be refracted outwards. But if you project back along these lines, you get to a virtual focal point. And that becomes, as it were, the virtual focal point. It's the point from which these rays appear to have come. So what happens to objects and images in this situation? Well, once again, here is our concave lens, and here is the central line, and here is an object. Now, here are our two lines. The first line is the parallel line, which now will not be refracted towards a focal point, but as we saw up here, is refracted outwards. And so this is going to be refracted outwards. Here is the ray of light from the object refracted outwards. And as I said, you can project that back. And it's as if it has come from this point here. The second line that we draw is the line that goes through the mirror, sorry, through the lens and out the other side. That's exactly the same as with a convex lens. It is not refracted. And the point where these two lines cross is where you get your image. And now you'll notice that the image is on the same side as the lens and it is the right way up but it is what's called a virtual image. The distance from the image to the lens is still v, and the distance from the object to the lens is still u. This distance here, that's the focal point, that is still f, and 1 over u plus 1 over v is 1 over f. The same formula applies. But with this difference, when you have a virtual image, V is negative.
you always have to put a negative distance in the formula to get the calculation to come out right. And you always know when you've got a virtual image because it's when you've got either one or two of these lines are dotted lines. In other words, they are projected lines. No light actually travels in this direction. The light is actually going up here. It just appears to have come from here. It appears to have come from here. It's actually come from here and gone up here. It appears to come from here and that's why you get an image there. Similarly, let's consider a convex mirror. This is the silver side. Here's the line that goes through the centre. Now we're going to consider what happens to parallel light that hits the mirror. If this, if this were a concave mirror, we know that the light would be reflected to a focal point. But this isn't a, convex, a, a concave mirror, this is a convex mirror. And what is actually going to happen is the light is going to be reflected outwards, just like it was with the concave lens. And again, if we project backwards, we find that that light appears to come from this point here. And that's called the focal point of the convex mirror. So once again, we can ask, where is the image formed? Let's take our mirror. There's our straight line. Remember, this is the silver side of the mirror. And here is an object. We can draw two lines as we usually do. Here's the first. And that will be reflected outwards. Just as this would have reflected outwards. The second line we can draw is this one and that will be reflected such that that angle equals this angle. Angle of incidence equals angle of reflection. Now what can we do? We can project this line back and we can project this line back. And where the two cross is where you get your virtual image. And you'll notice now that it is on the other side of the mirror. So there's no question of being able to see it on a screen because there is actually no light on the other side of the mirror. And it is the same height. And the same formula applies, the distance of the object from the mirror is given the letter U. The distance of the image from the mirror is the letter V. And the focal point, which of course would be here, that's the point at which the light appears to come from parallel lines, that will be F. And 1 over U plus 1 over V equals 1 over F still applies but with the rule that because this is a virtual image, the distance V in the formula has to be given as a negative distance. Let me explain what I mean by a negative length. First, we'll take the example of a convex lens, which of course has no virtual image. Indeed, it has a real image. Here is the object. Here are the two lines that we draw. The parallel line goes through the focal point, the other line goes through the centre of the lens and where the two lines cross is where the image is and we say that the distance of the object to the lens is U, the distance of the image to the lens is V and the focal length is F. Well let's suppose that U is 6 centimetres and let's suppose that V is 2 centimetres and we want to know what is the focal length of the lens. Well, 1 over U plus 1 over V equals 1 over F. And that is 1 over U is 1 over 6 plus 1 over V is 1 over 2. And you can put all of that over 6. You get 1 plus 3 over 6 is 1 over F. And that means that F 
is 6 over 4, which is 1.5 centimetres. So for a convex lens, we didn't have to use any negative numbers at all because the image is a real image. Now let's take the example of a concave lens. And here I'll try and get a bit more central. There's our concave lens. Once again, I'm going to put an object here. The light goes like that and comes to a focal point backwards. This, of course, is a projected line. The actual light does this. The other line we draw is that one through the center of the lens. And where the two converge, that's where the image is. And you'll notice that the image is closer to the lens than the focal point. This is the virtual focal point. It's not strictly the focal point, as we shall see, because this is only a projected, this should be a dotted line here. Well, now let's take exactly the same numbers as we did before. Let's say that u is six centimeters, that is the distance from the object to the lens. And let's say that v is two centimeters, that is the distance of the image to the lens. And then we say one over f equals 1 over u plus 1 over v. But in this set of circumstances, what I'm saying is you have to, because v is an, a virtual image, you have to put in minus 2. The actual distance, of course, that distance there is 2 centimetres. But because it's virtual, in the formula, you have to put in minus 2. And that means that 1 over f equals 1 over 6, because we said u was 6 plus 1 over minus 2. And that equals, you can put that all over 6, 1 minus 3 over 6. And that gives you that 1 over f is equal to minus 2 over 6. And that means that f is minus 3, minus 3 centimetres. What the minus tells you is that it's a virtual focal length. The focal length is here. And that was obtained by projecting back the ray. So once again, you get the idea that it's virtual. And you'll notice that the focal length is three centimeters and V is two centimeters. That is to say that the image is inside the focal length. That's what I mean by a negative distance. When you have a virtual image, you simply put in the V term as a negative term and then you will, as likely as not, get a negative focal length. That doesn't mean to say the focal length is genuinely minus three centimetres. That distance is three centimetres. But of course, what the minus three tells you is that that light was not focused to the focal point. It was diverged. And the divergent light appears to come from a focal point. And because it appears to come from a focal point, that's why the focal length is given as a minus number. So we've looked at a convex lens and a concave mirror, both of which produce real images. We've looked at a concave lens and a convex mirror, both of which produce virtual images. In all cases, we have looked at situations where the object has been further away from the mirror or the lens than the focal length. Now we're going to ask what happens if the object is closer to the mirror or the lens than the focal length. First, let's consider a convex lens. There's the convex lens. There's the line that runs through the middle. Let's suppose that the object is very close. It's here. Let's now draw our two lines that we can always draw. The first is the parallel line of light. That light will, of course, be refracted through the focal point. And let's say the focal point is here. As you can see, the object is much closer to the lens than the focal point. We know we can also draw a line, a light line that goes straight through the middle of the lens and out the other side. It isn't refracted at all. And as you can see, those two lines are never going to converge. But we can project backwards. This line here, we can project back. 
And this line here we can project back. And where the two cross is where the virtual image is formed. It's a virtual image because we've got these dotted lines because we've had to project backwards. Once again, the rule applies that the distance of the object to the lens is given by the letter U. The distance of the virtual image from the lens is given by V. And the focal length is F and 1 over U plus 1 over V is 1 over F. But remember the rule, if it's a virtual image, then V is always negative. What happens if we have an object within the focal length of a concave lens. Here is our concave lens. Here is our central line. Here is the object. And as usual, we can draw our parallel line. And that, as we know, is going to be refracted outwards. So that's the light going in that direction. And we can draw our line going through the lens and out the other side, not refracted at all. And what we do now is project back. This will go back to the focal point, which, is, which means that the object is within the focal point. And where these two lines overlap here is where we get our virtual image. We know it's a virtual image because we've had to use a projected line backwards to get it. And the formula applies 1 over u plus 1 over v is 1 over f. But again, because it's a virtual image, that v will be negative. Now we're going to look at a concave mirror and ask what happens if the object is inside the focal length. Here's the silvered side of the mirror. The two lines we can draw, here's the first, the parallel, sorry, there's the object. I should have drawn the, the object first. Here is, uh, there won't be anything there. Here is the light, which is, as we know, going to be reflected to the focal point, which is here. So the object is within the focal point. The second line we can draw, of course, is the line that goes down here, and the angle of incidence will equal the angle of reflection. So that will look something like that. And as you can see again, these two rays, this one and this one, are diverging. They are never going to converge. But if we project back, and I'm just going to bend them a little bit because the drawing hasn't been terribly good here, but if I bend them a little bit, um, they should be straight lines. Uh, where they cross, that's where the image is formed. I should say, remember, these should be straight lines. I've not drawn them terribly well. Um, but wherever they straight lines cross, that's where the image is formed. And so you can see that this is now another virtual image because we had to project back the light lines. Once again, 1 over u, which is the distance from the object to the lens, plus 1 over v, the distance of the image to the lens, is equal to 1 over f, the focal point or the focal distance. And because it's a virtual image, v is going to be negative. And finally, what about a convex mirror? This is the silvered side. And we're asking what happens if the object is inside the focal length of the mirror. Well, here's the object. And once again, we draw our two lines. The first is the parallel line, which we know is going to be reflected outwards. So there's the light reflected there. The second is the line that goes like this, and the angle of incidence will equal the angle of reflection. And what do we have to do? We project back this line here, and where the two cross is where the image appears, but because we've had to use a projected back line, that means it's a virtual image, so 1 over u plus 1 over v equals 1 over f will apply, but it's a virtual image, so v is going to be negative. So just to recap, we've looked at convex lenses and concave lenses. 
Concave mirrors and convex mirrors. We've looked at them when the object is outside the focal length and what happens when it's inside the focal length. Which leaves just one final question. What happens if the object is precisely at the focal length of any one of these mirrors or lenses? Well, let's just consider, for our example, a convex lens. And we'll draw the standard line through it and we will put the object at the focal point, which means that the focal point will be, it's the same on both sides of the lens, so it's about there, that's the focal point. Now let's draw our two diagram, uh, our two lines. The first is the parallel line, that will be refracted through the focal point. Now let's draw our other line, which goes through the centre of the lens, out the other side, as a straight line. Those are the two light rays. And as you can see, those two rays are absolutely parallel. They will never, ever meet. It doesn't matter how far you go in this direction. It doesn't matter how far you project back. They are parallel lines. They'll never meet. Consequently, the object that is placed at the focal point will never form an image. And that is true of all lenses, convex and concave, and all mirrors, convex and concave.